Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna take a detailed look at the new battery from LI Time. This is their 100 amp hour, 12.8 volt lithium iron phosphate battery, and it is called their Smart Edition. We're gonna find out what that means, and we're gonna find out, is it worth a look? Let's see. So somewhere around five or six months ago, I did a review on this lithium iron phosphate battery here from Ampere Time, and you'll notice that the graphics look strikingly similar. Is uh, LI Time copying off Ampere Time? Turns out that's not actually the case. So what's actually happening, apparently, is that Ampere Time is rebranding to LI Time, and LI is meant to more closely brand their product line uh, and alignment with their focus on lithium-based chemistry, so in particular lithium iron phosphate. If you have an Ampere Time battery and it's under warranty, does that mean your warranty is no longer going to be honored? No, it doesn't mean that at all. They will still continue to sell Ampere Time batteries for a while, at least until stock runs out, and the rebranded ones under the LI Time uh, brand will continue from there. But you can also now buy from litime.com uh, instead of ampuretime.com. You can buy all of these on uh, Amazon as well. But we're going to take a look at this particular one and find out what's so smart about this battery. But let's jump back in time and see what you get when you open the box. All right, one documentation packet, nice color manual. It's got a service card quick start guide, which looks pretty basic but useful, and then some product information. So nice little documentation packet. This is just a little baggie with a couple of, looks like M8 uh, terminal bolts. There's a spare pair in there and some uh, bolt caps. So it's always nice to have those. Right. This is the Smart Edition. This is kind of interesting. It's got a power button on top, who knew? We're gonna have to go run this thing through the paces, find out how it performs and see how it stacks up. So. Let's jump forward in time and do that. And we're back. Okay, so I've run this thing through a whole variety of tests and we're gonna get into that in just a second, but let's real quickly just kind of cover some of the basic information that you might wanna know about this battery. So if right out of the gate, how much does this battery cost? Well, uh, on the litime.com website, I think it is 489 and I believe they've given me a discount code. You may wanna check the description to be sure. I'll put that in the, in the description of the video below. Uh, but I think they've given me a discount code that probably only works on the litime.com website, but you can also buy it through Amazon. And I think right now the Amazon price might be a little less expensive. So I'll put that link in there as well. And you might want to just check and see where you can get the best deal and uh, you know choose accordingly. So this battery has a five-year warranty. And as I mentioned, it is lithium iron phosphate, which means it's rated for at least to retain 80% of its original capacity for up to 4,000 full charge and discharge cycles. And what that equates to is somewhere between 10 and 20 years functional life, kind of depending on how you use the battery and under what conditions. Now this battery weighs just under 25 pounds and from this distance here across the front, it is 10.8 inches long and it is about 8.13 inches wide in this direction here. And it is just about maybe 8.1 or maybe 7.9 inches. So right around eight inches tall. Now, one of the things I mentioned during the unboxing that kind of surprised me, because I didn't actually know this about the battery before I received it, is that it has this on off button here. But right now this button is flashing green, which is basically a nice visual indicator that the state of charge is below 25%. So once the state of charge uh, starts to go above 25%, it'll go to a solid green. Now, one of the interesting benefits of this on off feature that didn't really occur to me until I started assembling this into you know, an AC inverter kit was that if you've ever wired an AC inverter, when you complete the circuit and you connect that positive cable, you will get a spark as the AC inverter attempts to energize its capacitors. And it's a pretty nasty spark sometimes. Uh, and you really should be wearing glasses and you wanna keep your hands away from that because you could get actually a little piece of molten metal that flies off of those terminals. So, and sometimes if you forget about that, if you get lazy, that could actually be a little bit of a hazard. But when you power the battery down with this one touch button, you won't get that initial spark as the uh, capacitor is energized. That won't happen until you turn the battery back on 
and by that time you've already got a solid contact with your cables and you don't get the spark. So that's kind of, that was kind of a, a nice unexpected bonus of this particular one touch feature. Now, as you might expect on a battery of this capacity, this is a 100 amp BMS and it does have multiple pr protections. So it's got overcharge discharge protection. It's got overcurrent protection, short circuit protection. It's got high temp cutoff and low temp cutoff, as I mentioned. Let's jump in and take a look and see how the testing went on this battery. All right, let's do a capacity test. And you can see we're reading 12.8 volts. I've currently got it right at just about nine amps and only 127 watts, but we can take this up to about 180 watts. Okay, let's let that run and see uh, how we do. All right, the discharge test is done. And this, as we can see, is a 100 amp hour battery. So at 12.8 volts, this would should equal about 1,280 watt hours. But if we look at what we actually got here, we got 1,254.93 watt hours and 102 amp hours. So excellent discharge performance or capacity performance. All right, we are gonna check on our LI time battery. I have had it in here for over 24 hours. It's been about a day and a half. And I've got a smart shunt attached so I can start to see if I'm getting any change in charging status. But right now, as you can see, 3.9 degrees, 3.9 degrees Fahrenheit is the current temp. So this, I'm sure this battery is absolutely frozen solid. So I'm going to pull it out. We're going to put it on the table and we're going to attach a 12 volt charger and the battery should not charge because it should be under low temp protection. And we're going to find out if the charging automatically resumes at some point as the battery's core temperature uh, warms up to the minimum cutoff point of 32 degrees. And we'll find out if it resumes on its own. So let's go ahead and get that set up. All right, just so you can see here, I've got a little temperature gauge and this is reading on the outside 13 degrees. And I guarantee you it's colder than that on the inside. In fact, you can see a little bit of condensation here as this thing is starting to uh, warm up. But let's go ahead and attach the charger. You can see the charger has its power light LED is on. So if I connect this right now to these frozen bolts, it should not start charging. And you heard it kick on as it sensed a connection you have the green light here, but this thing shut off immediately because low temp on the battery uh, management system is cutting off the charging. So we're going to just see if this thing actually resumes charging once it warms up on its own. I'm not going to do anything with it. I'll check back periodically. I'll check back every uh, 30 or 40 minutes just to see how long it takes. Currently it is 12.38 in the afternoon and we'll check back in a while and just see if it has resumed charging or not two hours later at some point it snuck in and started charging without me knowing it so it's 3 15. so sometime in the last couple of hours it warmed up enough to start charging so we're going to top this thing off and we're going to rerun a capacity test to make sure we're getting basically the same numbers we were getting before and that the freezing and charging process hasn't somehow caused any damage. So we'll just make sure that is the case. All right, now that this is fully thawed out and fully recharged, let's go ahead and retest battery capacity. And we'll dial this back up to 180 watts. And we'll let that run again and we'll see what kind of capacity we get. All right, our follow-up DC discharge test is done and we got 1,266 watt hours or 102 amp hours. I think that is right on par with what we got before we did the deep freeze test. So we appear to be just fine. All right, let's take a look at how this one touch button works. Currently you can see that it's off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a volt check. And we are getting 3.29 volts only. And if we were to connect a load to it, like my little battery tester here, I pivot you over here, you can see that my battery tester is not running. So I can try to turn the voltage up, but nothing happens. And so now if I just do a quick single press here, the battery will turn on 
and if you look over here at my battery tester, you can see that it is now running and showing a voltage of 12.8 volts under load. Let's uh, go ahead and disconnect the battery tester load. And let's check voltage now. So now we're getting 13.33 volts. Now it will automatically, if there's no load on the battery, charge or discharge, it will automatically put itself into a sleep state which also looks like it is off. So you really can't tell just by looking at the one touch button here, if it's sleeping or if it's off. Now, if it is off, as you saw, when I apply a load, it doesn't wake up. However, if it's in a sleep state and I apply a load, it will wake up. All right, our 30 minute window is over and we are now in sleep mode because there was no load of charge or discharge on the battery. So after 30 minutes of that, it automatically went to sleep mode which should mean that when I apply a load from my battery tester, it should automatically start discharging. So let's find out if that is the case. And as you can see, battery tester took off immediately. So it did auto start to discharge. Now there are a variety of other functions of the one touch button. The other thing probably that's real notable is that on the low temp cutoff, if you want to override that, as long as the battery hasn't reached negative four degrees Fahrenheit, you can override the, uh, the low temperature cutoff for an emergency situation. And they say it's for emergencies because you don't want to do this for any, you know, just any old freeze thaw kind of period because you will shorten the life or possibly damage the battery over time if you do that. So you only want to do that if it's absolutely necessary. But if it's in a low temp protection state, you basically give it a short press and then within five seconds, give it another short press and it will go to green and allow you to start charging the battery if you need to. All right, so as you saw, this battery is a solid performer in the battery capacity test. And it actually performs as advertised on the low temp cutoff. And one thing that I thought was kind of interesting is that after I retested my battery capacity, after subjecting it to a very solid hard freeze for more than 24 hours, I actually got 10 more watt hours out of the capacity test. So go figure, I'm not sure why that was, but the good news is it wasn't dramatically less. And that's what I was really looking for. So clearly the low temp cutoff protection actually does its job. So let's jump back into the testing and see how the BMS performs. Let's go ahead and do some testing on the BMS for this LI Time battery. Now this is a 100 amp BMS, which means that it is rated for a maximum continuous charge or discharge of 100 amps and a maximum continuous load of 1280 watts. So we're gonna start putting this thing under load and we're gonna monitor what's going into this battery or what's coming out of this battery from this Victron Smart Shunt. And I'll go ahead and get that here loaded on the app so we can monitor that. And you can see we're currently drawing zero amps and zero power. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my 2000 watt inverter. I actually have three space heaters. You only see two of them here. One of them is just out of the shot. It's a oil heater on the floor. And that's set to low and currently drawing, as you can see, about 500 watts. So let's go ahead and kick on this taller space heater on the right. So here we are over 100 amps. We passed 1280 watts, 110 amps, 1400 watts, 1500 watts, 120 amps. We were able to get a little over 1500 watts before the BMS shut us off and a little over 120 amps continuous. So it does look like if you are just doing this for five or six seconds, you can get that massive amperage draw if you need to, uh, but it won't let you do it continuously. So BMS works as advertised. All right, so as you saw, the BMS performs as advertised as well. You can absolutely run this thing continuously at its max rated output of 100 amps and 1280 watts. In fact, you can exceed that a little bit and it'll still allow you to run for a pretty significant period of time. But if you exceed that up to what we saw, 14 to 1500 watts and upwards of around 120 amps, this thing will only give you maybe eight seconds uh, max and it will cut you off and stop charging until uh, that load is withdrawn from the battery. 
it will automatically recover itself and continue normal operation once the overload condition is clear. So that's pretty cool. I didn't really have to do anything as far as the resetting the battery or anything like that. I do think this battery is a solid choice, especially if you're in an environment where you do need to make sure that you keep it protected when the temperature drops and this thing is likely to freeze overnight. Uh, you, you do need something like low temp cutoff in those conditions and something like this absolutely would fit the bill. So again, I'll put details on this in the description below if you wanna go check those out, including a, a discount code direct from the LI Time website, or you can get it direct from Amazon as well. And hey, if you have any questions about the battery, feel free to leave those in the comments below and I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. And uh, if I don't know the answer, I'll tell you that as well. So hopefully you found some of this information useful. If you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up on the video. I really would appreciate that. And I've got lots more topics along these lines and some DIY stuff, some very interesting stuff that I, I'm really excited to share with you coming up soon. So if you're interested in these kinds of topics and content, please consider subscribing if you're not already a subscriber. And uh, ah, I'll let you go. I do hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have fun out there.